الحمد لله الذي جمعنا وياكم في هذه الساعة المباركة وفي هذا المسجد المبارك نتلقى نتلقى أنوار الله سبحانه وتعالى التي يبثها في القلوب والتي يشرح بها الصدور الشيخ بيجان by thanking Allah سبحانه وتعالى praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى for gathering us in this masjid um, where we receive the light from Allah سبحانه وتعالى into the hearts and into the chests وهذه الأنوار التي ترد في القلوب تكشف للمسلم عظمة ما أعطاه الله سبحانه وتعالى من النعم وما تكرم المولى سبحانه وتعالى به عليه من العطايا These lights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us in the hearts will reveal to the believer all of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them and become, make them more obvious to them. وأول جرعة من النور يقذفها المولى سبحانه وتعالى في قلب المسلم والمسلمة أن يدرك عظمة الإسلام الذي أعطاه الله إياه والذي تكرم المولى سبحانه وتعالى به عليه. The first dose of this light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you is to recognize the greatness of this religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with and blessed, uh, this is for the believing woman and believing woman. وبوجود هذا النور ينشرح الصدر ويفرح بالله وبالإسلام وبالقرآن وبرسوله المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. And with the presence of this light, you will be happy and joyous with the light of of Allah and of Islam and of the Quran and of the beloved صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. كما قال المولى سبحانه وتعالى أفمن شرح الله صدره للإسلام فهو على نور من ربه. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says whoever's heart is expanded with Islam then this person is is with light from their Lord. هذه النعمة العظيمة نعمة الإسلام التي لا تقوم بقيمة. This great blessing which is Islam it is not something that you can actually account for with any value. والتي يختص الله سبحانه وتعالى بها من يشاء من عباده إذا رحمه الرحمة الخاصة فيعطي هذا الإسلام العظيم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى chooses particular people to give this blessing of Islam which is a great blessing. وكم من شخص ذكي وكم من شخص فيلسوف وكم من شخص في أرقى المقامات الدنيوية ولكنه لا يهتدي إلى الإسلام ولا يرشد إلى الإسلام ولا يعرف هذا الدين الذي ربنا تكرم به علينا وعليكم وجعله وارث للأديان وارث لمحاسن الأديان كلها وفيه كل خير في الأديان الله How, look how, how many intellectual people are there, how many philosophers, how many scientists, how many smart people are there who try to think about everything but they do not get to this great light of Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses us and He blessed us with this religion, this great religion that is Islam. وبذلك نتمسك بهذا الدين العظيم تمسكا كاملا وكيف نتمسك به؟ أول شيء نتمسك بهذا الدين بأن يرسخه الله في قلوبنا أن نشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى صباحا ومساء أن جعلنا من أهل هذا الدين ومن أمة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. So how do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hold on to this religion? The first thing that you have to do is thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the daytime and in the nighttime for blessing you with this religion and for blessing you with the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلِذَلِكْ نَحْنُ وَأَنْتُمْ فِي مِثْلِ هَذَا الزَّمَانِ فِي آخِرَ الزَّمَانِ نَحْنْ عَلَى مَشَارِفْ تَجْدِيدْ حَقَائِقِ الدِّينِ وَعَلَى مَشَارِفْ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ النَّاسِ غير المسلمين والمسلمون عظمة الدين ولب الدين وسر الدين وجوهر الدين العظيم هذا. As we are towards the end of times right now, we are at the time that we have to actually recognize and know whether you are a Muslim or a non-Muslim, the greatness of this religion and the blessing of this religion and the light that this religion gives you. كما قال المولى سبحانه وتعالى وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he has promised those who he has given this religion that he will give them the inheritance of this religion upon this earth. ولكن للوقت الذي يظهر فيه ظهور هذا الدين أو ظهور حقائقه للناس ولغير المسلمين أول من سيكتشفه غير المسلمين نحن نكون مثل الغربة في وقتنا هذا نتمسك بحقائق هذا الدين إلى أن يكتشفه غير المسلمين. We have to uphold the realities of this religion and really adhere to them because now we have a situation where non-Muslims are discovering the realities, the realities of this religion whereas Muslims are actually like strangers. So we have to hold on to the realities of this religion until those, those who do not have it discover it. وسيكتشف غير المسلمين عظمة هذا الدين وصدق هذا الدين ورحمة هذا الدين بالعلم وليس بالتقليد نحن ربما دخلنا هذا الدين مقلدين لآبائنا ومهاتنا كل واحد تبع أباه وتبع أمه لكن هم سيعرفون عظمة هذا الدين بالعلم بما يظهره الله عز وجل لهم في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم من حقيقة هذا الدين ورحمة الدين الذي يشوه 
في قلوب كثير من الناس وفي عقول كثير من الناس. This religion which is being really tarnished and damaged by in the hearts and the minds of many people, they will still discover and they will discover the reality of it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reveal it in the horizon and, and within themselves um, until they see the reality of it and the truth of it. And when they uphold it, they will uphold it with intelligence as opposed to many of us who are born into this religion and not really see the reality of it. وهذا وعد قرآني من الله للنبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم يقول في سورة الشورى سنريهم من هم غير المسلمين ما قال الله عز وجل سنريكم المسلمون يرون الحقائق باعين قلوبهم بالبصائر لا تحتاج أبدا ولكن قال سنريهم Who does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise to show this in Surah Ash-Shura? He says, Sanurihim, we will show them. He doesn't say, Sanurikum, we will show you, we will show them. And as we show them, they will see it. Because the believers, the Muslims, we see it with the light of the heart, we see it with the insight. Whereas they'll see it with their eyes. Sanurihim ayatina fil afagi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq. وهذا الضمير أنه الحق أي القرآن أو النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that we will show them in the horizons and within themselves. What are we going to show them? We're going to show them that the reality of this Quran or al-haq is also the beloved صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. والسين في هذه الآية سنريهم في اللغة العربية تفيد الاستقبال. فالقرآن يخاطب الحاضرين الآن سنريهم في المستقبل آياتنا وفي الماضي كان يخاطب أهل الزمن الماضي سنريهم آياتنا في الم... في... 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 سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم فلا يزال الدين متجدد والمولى عز وجل لكشف لعباده آياته فيدخلون في هذا الدين ويعرفون عظمة هذا الدين و... ويسر هذا الدين. So he points into a linguistic part about the ayah itself with the scene at the start of سنريهم it shows that it's actually a futuristic thing and so for people in the past they will see in the future that this is the reality this is the truth and also for people in the past it's this religion is continuously renewing and it's always coming with the new thing for every generation تتشكك في محاسن هذا الدين وفي كمال هذا الدين. And until that time is shown for people to see the reality, we're going to preserve our intellects and we're going to preserve our hearts so that we do not have doubts about the reality of this religion. لأن البعض سبحان الله قد لا يفهم حكم التشريع وقد تدخل عليه الأفكار لماذا مثلا الزكاة نصف العشر لماذا ربع العشر لماذا كذا وكذا وهذا تشريع من السماء لا مجال فيه للعقل العقل فيه هنا يسجد ويسلم. Because some people today, they will start to go into the wisdoms of why some, things, some rulings are being revealed the way that they are. Why is the cat calculated at 2.5%? Why is it like this and why is it like that? And your intellect is too limited to recognize the wisdoms of these things and so they delve into areas where they're not supposed to. We know some of the rules of the rules and we don't know all the rules in this religion. Because the rules of the Lord is the Lord. It's not from the thoughts of people or from the studies. مخلوقين ولا فلاسفة ولا بروفيسورات ولا دكاترة تشريع إلهي فوق مستوى العقول. Indeed we might know some of the wisdoms of the Sharia but we don't comprehend all of the wisdoms of the Sharia because this came from the Creator who is greater than all intellects. It didn't come from an intellectual or a philosopher or an academic of some sort. This came from the Creator of all of these people who encompasses all of the knowledge of more. قد نفهم بعض الحكم من تشريعات الله عز وجل بعض حكم الصوم ولا نفهم كل حكم الله عز وجل في الصوم قد نفهم بعض الحكم في الصلاة من الحق عز وجل ولا نفهم كل حكم الله التي ودعها في الصلاة ولا في القيام ولا في الحج نفهم البعض لأنه دين عظيم كبير من الله سبحانه وتعالى. We might understand some of the wisdoms that come in fasting, that come in prayer, that come in the night vigil, the tahajjud that we do uh, in the hajj itself, but we are not going to encompass all of the wisdoms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, but that he's, the greater, he's the great creator who has given us all of this tashriya. فلذلك دائما نجعل نظراتنا للأمور نظرة النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. That's why we have to maintain our um, understanding of all matters the same way that the beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam understood all of these. فلا نتشكك في أي تشريع من تشريعات الله سبحانه وتعالى. So we don't have any doubts in any of the legal obligations that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given. ولا نجعل قلوبنا تميل عن المحبة لأي لأي حكم من أحكام شرع الله سبحانه وتعالى. Allah. And we do not have our hearts sway away from the love of any of the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فإن الإنسان إذا نور الله سبحانه وتعالى قلبه كالأولياء والأصفياء وفتح عين قلبه المعبر عنها في سورة الحج بالبصيرة رأى كمال هذا الدين ولكن في نظرته الآن يرى جزء من هنا وجزء من هنا وجزء من هنا وقد يختلف المسلمون حتى لأن نظرتهم جزئية وليست نظرتهم نبوية نورانية للدين كاملة.
Whoever looks upon these matters with the eye of the heart, the insight of the heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open their heart with the light so that they can see all of these things as they should, see, should be seen. But they're not going to have these limited uh, perspectives on every matter that comes through. And you have to recognize that even Muslims, as they examine these things, they'll have differences in opinion because their understanding is also limited and uh, limited by their perspective. <laughs> That's why the example of those who have not had their insights actually opened up. Their example is like those who are blind. And a blind person cannot recognize all of the things that they're surrounded with, with including their, their marvelous things that they can reveal to them. And Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, mathal muslimin ma' hadha al-deen al-azim wal-hikma fi tashri'atih wa fahm asrarha wa daqa'ikha Imam al-Ghazali said that the example of the believers, the Muslims, in recognizing the, the marvelous aspects of this sharia and all of the secrets that it has, and their differences amongst one another, is the example of a people who are blind and they're in a village. And so they heard that there is a strange large animal called an elephant that has arrived to this village. So all those blind people in the village came out to, to figure out what this big animal that's called an elephant is. And all the rest remained in the village. So the first group of blind people started to recognize and know this, this elephant from just its feet and its legs. And the other group of blind people tried to figure out this elephant just by looking at its tusks. And the other, the third group of blind people tried to figure out the animal through feeling its, you know, its ears. فالعميان عندما عادوا إلى القرية سألهم العميان الآخرون كيف وجدتم الفيل؟ قالوا حيوان ضخم كبيرا كالأعمدة وكالسواري خشن. So when the first group came back and they and they were asked by the blind people in the village, what did you find out about this animal? They said it's like this uh, great building with pillars, um, uh, with strong pillars that you can feel. ثم جاءت الطائفة الثانية فسألهم كيف وجدتم الفيل؟ هل هو خشن وضخم وكبير؟ قالوا لا ناعم لا توجد في أي خشونة. So the, th the second group when they came back, the second group of blind people when they came back and they were asked, what did you find about this, uh, this elephant? They said, did you find it that it's rough and it's also like pillars that are strong? And they said, no, it's actually very soft. And in fact, it's not like the first group that described it as big, huge building like a mosque. It's actually very soft and it's really, it's leaning and it's, it's easy to handle. ثم جاءت الطائفة الثالثة فسألهم كيف وجدتم الفيل هل هو ناعم أم خشن؟ So the third group came back and they were asked, what did you find this elephant? Did you find it soft or is it rough? فقالوا ليس ناعما ولا خشنا ولكنه شيء لينا ويتحرك من قالكم هؤلاء يكذبون. So they said actually it's not rough and it's not soft. It's neither one. It's actually moving and it's it's gentle. فصار العميان كلهم يختلفون في القرية وكل واحد يدعي أنه على الحق ويحلف أنه على الصواب. So all the blind people in the village started to argue with one another and they all started to swear to, towards each other saying that I swear that I have the truth and each one is speaking from their own. So so a fourth group, a fourth group of people who actually can see came back and they saw people are arguing against one another about the aspects of this elephant and then they told them these, this group just saw the feet and the legs and this group just saw the ear, this group felt the ears and this group felt the, the tusks of the elephant but the elephant is a much greater animal than all of this and it actually has aspects of it that they didn't even recognize. وَلِكَذَلِكْ دِينُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى الَّذِي نَزَلْ عَلَى قَلْبِ النَّبِي الْمُصْطَفَى مُحَمَّدِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَعْظَمْ مِنْ أَنْ يُتْحِيطُ بُهُ طَائِفَةً أو مذهب هو يمثل الدين ككل هذا المذهب جزء من الدين وهذه الطائفة جزء من الدين والدين أكبر يشمل البشرية كلها عالمية كلها كما قال سبحانه وتعالى وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. Like so is the religion of Islam. It's much greater than to just restrict it to one group of people or one sect that claims that they have the truth and the whole truth. It's actually they're part of the truth and the truth is much greater than all of them. They're just part of it and each one is serving part of it. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this religion is encompassing all of humanity as he said about the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa we did not send you except as a mercy to all the world. ولذلك لا نقدر بعقولنا فقط المجرد ان نفهم حكم الدين ودقائق الدين واسرار الدين مثل ماذا اسرار الدين مثل ليلة القدر في ليلة القدر في رمضان ليلة مجهولة ليلة سرية ليست مكشوفة لكل أحد ولا يهتدي لها الإنسان بعقله يهتدي لها بنوره وببصيرته Like so we cannot encompass the secrets or know the secrets of this religion through our intellects an example of that is the night of the divine decree in Ramadan ليلة القدر Nobody knows when it exactly it is it's not revealed to anybody it's something that you cannot find out through your intellect but you will find out and you'll know about it through the light of the heart وكذلك ربنا عز وجل أعطانا عطية من عنده ساعة إجابة في كل يوم جمعة من وافقها مسلم لا يسأل الله شيئا من أمر الدنيا والآخرة اللي أعطاه إياه سبحانه وتعالى وهذه مجهولة ساعة شريفة مباركة لكنها مجهولة ليست مكشوفة بنور القلب يهتدي المسلم إليها يعرف هذا السر الذي كشفه الله سبحانه وتعالى لخواص عباده Like so the blessed hour the blessed noble hour in, in جمعة and Friday Nobody knows when it is exactly it is. If you make a dua during the time of that hour on Friday, your dua will be answered. And nobody knows when it exactly it is, but the believer through the light of their heart can actually be guided to finding out when exactly that hour is. And they will make the dua and it will be answered inshallah. So the intellects have limits, they cannot pass them. And the intellect cannot be guided to finding everything that they want. If the, the intellects were able to find out things just through their own thing, they would have actually figured out all of medicine without having any trials. But you find out that they have to do trials to find out the truth behind medicines. And this way they, they need to do it. And so the, the human intellect is not designed, this is not a call to dismiss the human intellect, rather the Qur'an is calling you to reflect, to contemplate, to look into the Qur'an, to reflect on the creation, but you have to recognize that the intellect's role is not to start restricting the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and judging it using your intellect. Rather, the intellect is a servant of it. And as long as you keep it as a servant of it, you'll be fine. But it's limited because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it limited. What you can do is you can reflect on things in the creation, but you cannot, you cannot judge the creator with it. أكبر عقلية في البشر في جنس الإنسان لا تقدر أن تتصور المتناقضات ولا المتضادات. The greatest intellect in us, in the in the in the in humanity, cannot ref, uh, contemplate or think of things that are contradictory. The law of non-contradiction. They can't even imagine things that are contradictory. أكبر ذكي في الإنسانية لو قيل له تخيل هذا الجسم اليسير البسيط ليس في حالة سكون وليس في حالة حركة سأجل سفكر عشرات السنين ولا يقدر عقله يتخيل هذا الأمر البسيط. فكيف يريد أن يتخيل الملائكة العظام أو صفات الرحمن سبحانه وتعالى وأنت تتخيل مخلوق صغير سواء في حالة سكون أو حالة حركة The greatest intellect if we tell you there is a small little creature that is in both a station of movement and or it's in a station of, uh, of, uh, of standing still you cannot comprehend that coming together at the same time and you can sit for 10 years, tens of years doing that and you won't get to a conclusion. How can you expect yourself if you can't imagine that small little creature doing this to all of a sudden imagine what the angels are like or to imagine what the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are like? عقله مركب كذا ربي ركب عقل الإنسان خلقه كذا خلق عين الإنسان هكذا لا تقدر أن ترى من الخلف ترى من الأمان خلق الأذن تسمع أصوات محددة خلق العقل يفكر بهذه الطريقة ولكن أمور وراء العقل أمور الروح وراء العقل أمور القبر ونعيمه وعذابه خلف العقل أمور الآخرة 
كلها غير هذه الاسباب خلف لذلك قال صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم ان في الجنه ما لا عين رات ولا اذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر على فكر بشر ولا على عقل بشر so the human intellect is designed my lord designed it in a way so that if i tell you i'm sitting right here and it's day and it's night at exactly the same time you can't even comprehend that you can't even imagine that so your intellect is created with limitations the same way that your eyes created to see frontwards you can't see backwards your ears can only hear certain sounds the same thing with all of your uh, your senses you can only sense limited things so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created your intellect with also limited capacities things beyond the intellect that's like the soul we're talking about paradise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that in paradise there is there is what no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard and nothing that has ever occurred to the heart of man this is allah's creation and he put things beyond your intellect and you have to recognize ولذلك الإسلام يجمع بين العقل وبين النقل نصوص القرآن ونصوص سنة النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. This is why the Islam, this is why Islam combines between the intellect and revelation and things that have been transmitted from the beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم where the two have to come together. فنحن في هذه الفترة وسيظهر الله عز وجل دينه وستقتنع الناس بالدين في المشارق والمغارب وسيزول كل التشويه عن الدين الذي يحاول البعض ان يلصقه ستتوضح الحقيقه ستظهر الحقيقه لكل من يعيش على ظهر الارض We are in this time of confusion and uh, we just have to uphold to the truth and adhere to the truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal all of these realities to everybody at the, at eventually so that they will see the realities as bright as day فنحن نتمسك بثوابت هذا الدين بيننا ومع بعضنا البعض وبيننا وبين غير المسلمين لاننا عندنا ثوابت نتعامل بها مع الانسان ومع الكائنات حولنا. We have things that are stable that they do not move and we adhere to them amongst one, one another amongst ourselves and also with non-Muslims we do not change these things because they've been there from the start of Islam. ونكثر ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم. And we increase in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we wake up before Fajr towards the end of the night. And we wake up before Fajr towards the end of the night. حتى يفتح المولى عز وجل عين القلب التي نحملها في قلوبنا كل واحد منكم يحمل داخ في راسه عينان وفي قلبه عين اسمها البصيرة. اسمها البصيرة هذه تنفتح عين القلب بكثرة الذكر لله وبها يرى حقائق الأشياء يرى حقائق الأشياء المخيبة عن الناس. So when you wake up towards the end of the night before Fajr and you increase in your dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up this eye of the heart. Each one of you has two eyes in your head and you have an eye in your heart. And it's through, through the eye of the heart that you have insight so that you see the realities that underpin everything that you see in existence. يتشكك في دينه ابدا ولا يبعد عن دينه ابدا لانها مكشوفه يكشف الله له عظمه هذا الدين كما كشفه للانبياء وللاصفياء وللمحبوبين عنده سبحانه وتعالى. Whoever's ever insight is opened and they actually see the realities underpinning everything that's in existence, they will never have any doubts or any any issues or any questions about anything in this religion because they will see the reality of these things and they'll have their insight opened in the way that the insight of the prophets and those chosen ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them about his bounty to, to see the reality. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the realities of this religion. To make us steadfast upon us. And to make us all supportive of each other for this. And to benefit us with this. So that we see the benefits of this religion in actual reality. So that non-Muslims will actually know the greatness of this religion. So that they will be guided to it through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ويجعلنا وياكم من الذين يتمسكون بهذا الدين قولا وفعلا. And make us, make us and you of those who will actually uphold this religion in statements and in actions. وحالا وذوقا. And in station and in, and in uh, taste. ذوقا يتذوقون انوار هذا الدين. So that we actually taste the light of this religion. كما تذوقها الاولياء والاصفياء سيدنا الشيخ عبد القادر الجالاني وغيره من اولياء الله. As those who have been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, have tasted the reality of this religion such as uh, Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani and others. فَلَا يُصِيبُهُمَ الْمَلَلْ مِنَ الْعِبَادَاتِ وَالطَّاعَاتِ So they never get bored with acts of ritual and acts of worship. المسلم إذا لم يتذوق شيء من حلاوة الدين ولم ينفتح له شيء 
من 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 باطن الدين قد يصيبه الكسل وقد يصيبه الملل. If the believer does not actually taste the realities of this religion and the internal stations of this religion, they will start to get bored with it. ولكن إذا كشفت له شيء من حقائق الدين وتذوق حلاوة الدين كما قال الرسول الأعظم صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم لاقى طعم الإيمان من رضي بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسيل ورسولا لا يمل أبدا من من تعليمات دينه هذا من صلاته ولا من ذكره ولا من قرآنه. The believer who actually tastes, who recognizes the reality of this religion, religion and tastes the sweetness of this religion as they do it, they will never be bored with it at all. As they, as the beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam called it, the sweetness of faith. When you experience that, you will never be bored with this religion. كانوا يقولون أن السيد الشيخ عبد القادر الجيلاني يصلي ألف ركعة في اليوم والليلة. They used to say that Sayyid Abdul Qadir Al Jilani used to pray a thousand rak'ahs every day and night. وكان قبله سيدنا علي زين العابدين يصلي ألف ركعة في اليوم والليلة. And before him, Sidi, Sayyidna Ali ibn Zayn al Abidin used to pray a thousand rak'ahs every day and night. وكان الصحابي سيدنا تميم الداري يقوم من بعد العشاء إلى الفجر يكرر آية واحدة في القرآن في سورة العنكبوت قول سبحانه وتعالى أم حسب الذين اجترحوا السيئات أن نجعلهم كالذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات يكرر آية من العشاء إلى طلوع الفجر ما يصيبه ملل. So the companion Tamim al-Dari used to recite after Isha all the way till Fajr an ayah from Surah Al-Ankabut. He would do one ayah all night and he would never get bored of it. It's the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do those who actually commit sinful actions believe that they're going to make them like those who believe. And, and he, the Shaykh here is wondering, does he not get bored? One verse, he's just doing it all night. يقوم من بعد الفجر من بعد العشاء إلى صلاة الفجر يكرر آية واحدة إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا يكرر هذه الآية وحان يكرر كلمة الود سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا ودا منه سبحانه وتعالى ودا في قلوب عباده ودا يكررها إلى الفجر لماذا لا يملون هؤلاء الجلاني وسيدنا عليه زين العابدين one of the Imams and Hadramaut used to pray at night from uh, Surat Maryam. He would recite, those who believe and do rightful, righteous actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them love. And he would just repeat that, will give them love, will give them love, will give them love. And the Shaykh here is wondering, like, do these people, how do these people can just do this one thing and just do it all night and not get bored? هؤلاء كلهم ومن قبلهم ومن بعدهم فتح الله عز وجل لقلوبهم جزء يسير من هذا الحديث من ذوق طعم الإيمان فلا يملون الطاعات. Those people, Allah subhanahu wa taala just gave them just a tiny little bit of an opening so that they can taste the sweetness, just a little sweetness of the acts of worship and the acts of ritual. ومن ذاق ذاق قلبه حلاوة الطاعات لا يمل أبدا ممكن يقول لا إله إلا الله مئة ألف مرة ولا يصيبه الملل. ولكن غيره ممكن يقول لا إله إلا الله ألف أو ثلاثة ألف ثم يصيبه الملل. So the one who actually experiences the sweetness of 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 this practice, the sweetness of ritual, they will say لا إله إلا الله a hundred thousand times and they will not be bored. As for the one who does not actually taste the sweetness of it, they might say a thousand, maybe three thousand, and then they'll get bored and stop. ممكن الذي لا يذوق ذلبه حلاوة هذا الإيمان وذوق هذا الإيمان ممكن يتضايق. من صلاة التراويح عشرين ركعة ويراها طويلة جدا. The one who has not tasted the sweetness of the practice, they might actually get really constricted and they get bored with taraweeh twenty rak'ahs and they will feel like it's really long. وقد يكون معذور. And they might have an excuse. لكن إذا فتح هذا الذوق ذاق طعم الإيمان ذاق طعم الإيمان لا يصيبه الملل أبدا مثل سيدنا الشيخ عبد القادر الجلاني وعلي زين العابدين وغيرهم من أولياء الله جعلنا الله وياكم منهم إن شاء الله. So, but if they have the, the door of the tasting the sweetness of these practices, they will never get bored. Just like Sayyid Abdul Qadir Jilani, Sayyidina Ali Zain al Abidin, they would never get bored with any of the practices. What tariq lidog hadha al halawat al ta'a wal ibadah wal dog al iman, lanu bad al dog tan fatih bab lil agil, yarf adamat al tashri' hadha. Fayasbit, yasbit al tashri'at al hag, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysat kalam al ulama, al ulama yifhamun fakat tashri' min al hag, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yasbit agluh wa galbuh ta'zeeman la awamar illah, alati kullaha rahma al ibadah. وكلها مصلحة ولا يوجد فيها أدنى ذرة من 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 عدم المصلحة فضلا من الظلم والعياذ بالله الذي قد يتصوره الإنسان. So the path towards actually recognizing this and and experiencing the sweetness of faith once you go through that and you experience the sweetness of practice 
what will happen is you'll have an opening in your heart and then your intellect itself will actually recognize the greatness of this of this religion and the greatness of this sharia ah, and then your intellect and your heart will fall in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the greatness of this and the sharia ah itself has it's all benefit and it is all mercy and it doesn't have an, even an atom's worth of no benefit let alone having any oppression in it whatsoever واسرع طريق للوصول الى ذوق هذه الطاعات ومعرفه حقائق الدين يسير جدا الاستيقاظ قبل الفجر قبل ان يؤذن الفجر ينتبه الانسان في الليل The fastest way to actually achieving the sweetness and to realizing it in oneself is to get up before the break of dawn before fajr before the adhan of fajr goes off في اي وقت من الليل يستيقظ قبل طلوع الفجر حتى وان لم يصلي حتى وان لم يركع المهم قبل الفجر ان ينتبه في هذا الوقت الشريف الذي تتنزل فيه الرحمات ويتحرك فيه حقائق الايمان في قلب كل مسلم ومسلمه so it's to get up before the break of dawn even if you don't pray even if you don't make wudu even if you don't recite quran is this is the time where the ben, the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends and the belief actually moves in the heart قد يكون الاستيقاظ قبل الفجر صعبا ولكنه في البداية يصعب ولكنه يكفي فقط أن يستيقظ الإنسان ثم طور آخر يقوم يتوضأ ويركع ركعتين يكفي أن يكون قبل الفجر مستيقظا منتبها لما يرسله الله عز وجل من الرحمات في هذا الوقت تدخل هذه الرحمات إلى القلب والروح من أين؟ من السمع والبصر عندما يكون نائما تمر فوقه الرحمات عندما ينتبه مبصرا سامعا تدخل الرحمات من جوارحه من سمعه وبصره ومن عباداته ومن طاعاته The measures of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends at that time before the break of dawn they're only for those who actually get up and they're paying attention and these things can only enter through the heart through the eyes and through the ears so if you're up and awake and you're paying attention you'll get them but if you're asleep these measures of mercy will just pass right over you في البداية قد يكون شاقا ولكن بعد ذلك يتمتع بهذا الليل وبالقيام في الليل At the start, it might be very difficult for you, and he mentioned that you might at the start not find it easy to pray. Just get up and actually just pay attention. And then through time, you will be able to get up and actually pray. And then you will start to yearn for the night so that you can look forward to actually getting up before Fajr and so that you can pray. ولذلك قال أحد التابعين سيدنا عتبة الغلام أحد التابعين يقول كابت الليل عشرين سنة ثم تلذذت به وتنعمت به 20 سنة. So one of the successors, Udba bin Ghulam, he said that I fought with the night for 20 years until it actually became sweet to me and then I enjoyed it and I started to enjoy the time for the next 20 years after. ولكن نحن في هذا الزمن قد لا نحتاج إلى 20 سنة، فقط أيام معدودات أو أشهر معدودات يخرج فيها الإنسان أربعة أشهر و40 يوما، فبرحمة الله الكبيرة ينفتح له هذا الخير العظيم وتنكشف له حقائق الدين ذوقا وذوقا وتحققا. We live in a time that we may not need actually 20 years. You just need a few days. You just get up for 10, 40 days and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open for you these things and you'll actually experience it in, in taste and in your heart. May Allah make us amongst those who actually realize these realities. And reveal to us what to our hearts what He also revealed to the hearts of His righteous servants. وجعلنا سبحانه وتعالى ممن تمسك بهذا الدين وسعد بهذا الدين في حياته الأولى وسعد بهذا الدين في حياته الأخرى. And may Allah make us amongst those who uphold this religion so that they're happy with it in the first life, in this life, and also in the next life. And generalize the benefits of this religion amongst all of those who are living in this planet. So that even non-Muslims will benefit from the religious teachings that Muslims are practicing. And Muslims should actually benefit more from this. From this. مثال هذا إذا إذا المولى عز وجل حرم عليك أنت أن تغتاب أحد فمعنى هذا أن المسلم حرم على أن المولى حرم على مليارين مسلم أن يغتابونك أنت كل هؤلاء حرام عليهم أن يغتابونك كل مسلم يتبادل الدين. An example of that if Allah subhanahu wa taala made it impermissible for you to backbite anybody that means there are two billion Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa taala has made impermissible for them to backbite. The non-Muslims. فإن الكل ينتفع من تعليمات الله سبحانه وتعالى. So everyone is benefiting from the from the teachings of Allah. زعلنا الله وإياكم من عباده الصالحين. May Allah make us amongst the righteous servants. وجعلنا سبحانه وتعالى قرة عين لنبيه الكريم. And may Allah make us coolness of the eye of His beloved Prophet. وجعلنا 
القرآن سبحانه وتعالى من المسلمين المنورين. الذين أدركوا حقائق هذا الدين. ونشروه للبشرية جمعا في المشارق والمغارب. وجزاكم الله خير ونعتذر لكم عن التأخير تأخرنا في المزيد. ولكن هذا التأخير إن شاء الله في تقديم لنا إلى أبواب الجنة وإلى القرب من الله. But maybe in this delay that we will have actually hastening towards the doors of paradise. وإن كان هذا في صورته تأخير ففي حقيقته تقديم. Even though in in its appearance it looks like we're delayed, but in its reality it's actually hastening towards the front. الختم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله ولقد اشرت لنعت من اوصافه تحيي القلوب تهيج الاشجان والله قد اثنى عليه فما يساوي القول منا او يكون ثنانا لكن حبا في السرائر قد دعا لمديح صفوة ربنا وحدانا وإذ امتزجنا بالمودة ها هنا نرفع أيدي فقرنا ورجانا للواحد الأحد العلي إلهنا متوسلين بمن إليه دعانا مختاره وحبيبه وصفيه زين الوجود به الإله حبانا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا بالمصطفى اقبلنا اجب دعوانا انت لنا انت لنا يا ذخرنا في هذه الدنيا وفي اخرانا اصلح لنا الاحوال واغفر ذنبنا ولا تؤاخذ ربي ان اخطانا واسلك بنا في نهج طه المصطفى ثبت على قدم الحبيب خطانا أرنا بفضل منك طلعة أحمد في بهجة عين الرضا ترعانا واربط به في كل حال حبلنا وحبال من ودى ومن والانا والمحسنين ومن أجاب ندانا وذو الحقوق وطالبا أوصانا والحاضرين وساعيا في جمعنا ها نحن بين يديك أنت ترانا ولقد رجوناك فحقق سولنا واسمع بفضلك يا سميع دعانا وانصر بنا سنة طه في بقاع الأرض واجمع كل من عادانا وانظر إلينا واسقنا كاس الهنا واشفي وعافي عاجلا مرضانا واقضي لنا الحاجات واحسن ختمنا عند الممات وأصلحا عقبانا يا رب واجمعنا وأحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا وأحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا وأحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا بالمصطفى صل عليه وآله ما حركت ريح الصبا أغصانا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين